Welcome everyone, I am MVRs. This is gonna be a new series on the basics of Blender. In this series I'm gonna start with modeling. I've created a character and what I wanted to do was make an iron suit for him. What I always liked was learning by doing. So I think if you follow along with your own project or with the project files I provided, I guess that will be a more fun way to learn. So, I can orbit around my character by holding Alt and dragging middle mouse. I can pan the view by middle mouse and drag in and I can Alt Shift middle mouse drag to zoom in or out. You can set these settings to whatever you like in the preferences menu, uh, in key map, um, 3D view and go to 3D view global and you got pan view, zoom view and dolly view. So yeah, that's basically it. While we are here, I'm gonna show you one more thing. Um, that is the, uh, that's the pie menu. The pie menu is something I use quite often. Um, if you don't like it, you don't have to use it, but I like it and it really, uh, it really speeds up my workflow. So yeah, like I said, we're gonna build an armored suit for Scott here. I provided you with some content art that was made by an artist on Fiverr. The link is in the description. I always recommend to start with the basic shapes and build your way out to the more difficult ones. I don't like that the first concept art doesn't have any feet, so I'm gonna combine the two and really make a, a mix of the two. Uh, first of all, it's good to know how do you add a new object. Normally it's, uh, it's pretty common to start from a box or a plane. Those two are really easy to manipulate into other shapes. In the bottom left corner you can go to add and uh, mesh. And then there are your geometric shapes. Like I said, we're gonna start with a box. We, we created a box here. You can go to the bottom left corner again, add mesh and then uh, add the mesh. First, I'm gonna delete uh, because I wanted to show you the shorter version for this and that is Shift A, Mesh, Cube. We manipulate objects in edit mode. You can go into edit mode by switching at the bottom left corner and hitting edit mode. A faster way to go between modes is hitting tab and if you have the pie menu enabled you can switch to a lot of different modes. Don't worry about these modes yet, uh, for now we're only gonna focus on the object mode and the edit mode. For now we want to stay in edit mode. First of all I want to explain to you the different methods of manipulating your object. I'm gonna isolate the object by hitting slash uh, and now we can only see the cube. I deselect the whole cube with Alt A and I can select all with A. Every object is a mesh built from vertices, edges and polygons. In Blender you can switch to these different modes by hitting 1 for vertice mode. I can select all the vertices right now, all the points that is. If I unselect all I can hit 2 and 2 brings us into the edges mode. 3 the final mode is polygon mode. I select the planes, the surfaces, the polygons if you will. Another method is uh, pressing C and that is the circle selection tool and you can just easily paint uh, your selection. You can scroll up and down if you wanted to select more or less in one go. By pressing the middle mouse key and holding it you can erase your selection. Um, another good thing to know is if I select this right now you, you might be thinking that we selected all the verses but if we turn around we can see that we didn't. How come? because this wasn't enabled. Um, if we now paint our selection, if we now paint our selection, you can see that we selected all. Okay, that's pretty much it about selecting. If you don't wanna use the, the X-ray mode, you can always go into wireframe mode. We'll focus on the solid and the wireframe because these are the most useful for us in modeling. Wireframe mode allows us to see through the model and select vertices or polygons or edges uh, through the model. Um, if anything is unclear to you, you can hover over an icon and it will give you a description of what it does. <clears throat> now we know how we can select uh, vertices, polygons or edges. Uh, how do we manipulate these? First of all, in the pie menu, if I hit control spacebar, I can show my gizmo and set it to say translate. Now we see the gizmo and we have three X's, the Z, the Y, and the X. And like you see, if I drag on one of the X's, I can transform 
the edges. A faster way to do this is pressing G for grabbing an edge, vertice or a polygon. Um, if you want to rotate something, you can press R for rotate. And if you want to scale something, you can press S to scale. Like I said before, if you have enabled the pie menu and you press control spacebar, you can switch modes to rotate and use the gizmo to rotate. Uh, or you can use it to scale with the gizmo. There's another menu as well, and that is the shift spacebar. We go out of isolation mode and we can start modeling. Uh, if we select all with A, we can drag up. I want it to be around the height of the knee. So place it somewhere there. If we go into polygon mode and we select the lower polygon, we can drag it down to say about there. If we look at the concept art, we see that the leg piece is rotated 45 degrees. If you press R, you can rotate the cube. If you press R, Z, you can rotate around an axis. Uh, so if I press R, Y, I constrain, I constrain my rotation to a certain axis. So I press R, Z, and then what I want to do, if you see the uh, bottom left corner, you see 30 uh, or 40, whatever number it says right now. If I type on my numpad 45, it will snap and constrain the rotation to 45 degrees. Press enter to confirm we can see that there's a nice taper in the leg. So the lower leg, uh, if we select the lower polygon and scale that in, we can also scale the top one a bit in. Uh, but this introduces a new problem. We lose the side of our vertices. In the properties panel on the right side, uh, we can click on the object mode or on the object tab, sorry and go to viewport display and press in front. This used to be the x-ray mode, but in Blender 2.8, it's renamed to in front. Now from every angle, you can see that our object is displayed in front of all the other ones. This can help sometimes, or sometimes it can be really distracting. Um, viewport display in front in the object tab. We got our basic shape down, but I want to get rid of this polygon and if I shift select I want to get rid of this polygon as well. If I press X I get into the delete menu. You see there's vertices, edges, but we want to delete the face. Uh, you see that there are a lot of different options here, uh, but we will get into this in a later stage. For now we just delete the faces. Now if we uh, select these two vertices, we want to drag those down a bit, just uh, to your own liking. And like I said, I want to combine the two concept arts. In the grayscale uh, concept art, there are space for the feet to sit, and I want to create the same room there. So I'm going to lift this up uh, to create some room for the ankle. We saw that we could select the vertices one by one, but sometimes speed is king, right? If you want to select a loop, meaning all these vertices and you want to do it fast you can make a loop selection how you do this is hovering over an edge that connects the loop holding alt left click now we can bring it up a little or if you say i need to be more down for my character or for my taste perfectly fine i'm going to bring it up a little in the concept art we see that there is uh, a bit more space between here we don't have to be true to the concept art, but I thought this is a nice starting point and we can build up our character from this base. Um, okay, so I again loop selected this, uh, these two vertices or I could select these edges and I want to introduce a new thing that is called a bevel. Uh, what a bevel does, a bevel is a tool in Blender that takes one or multiple selected edges and subdivides them. If I hit Ctrl B and I drag out my mouse, you can see that the one edge is now two. We can also go into the edge menu and say bevel edges. Like I said, Ctrl B is the shortcut. Um, Ctrl B, drag out. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that there are special abilities for this bevel tool. Most of the tools have this, 
it's always nice to see what your options are here. So for now, I want to show you two things, and that is the segment. You can add segments by scrolling down or up with your middle mouse button. You can see that it keeps the, the curve in there. And this is the next thing I want to talk about. This is the profile. If I hit P, you can see at the bottom of the screen again, there is P for profile, and it's now set to 0.5. If I hit P and I drag again, you can see that it creates a different um, profile. Uh, I want to set it back to 0.5, and I want to commit to this, so I'm going to say left click. If we go out of edit mode and go into object mode, I want to show you something called modifiers. With modeling, you start with a low poly mesh, but for a nice quality, you want a higher definition. How we do that is go into the modifiers tab, that is the blue wrench, and we say add modifier. The subdivision surface modifier subdivides every polygon into four more polygons. But there's a side effect from this modifier. So the subdivision modifier calculates the angle or the corner and makes it smoother. Sometimes this is a good thing, sometimes you don't want this, but then again, what you always want is a higher resolution model. So you need to work around this. How, you, how we gonna do that is by um, introducing support edges. Support edges work like this. The closer two edges are to each other, the sharper a corner will be. The further two edges are apart, the more you introduce a curve in your corner. If we go back into edit mode, we can see our original mesh that is faded out and we can see what a subdivision modifier has done to our mesh. Um, I want to keep a pretty sharp edge here. Maybe you guessed it already, but we can bevel this edge and create support edges. Control B and make two support edges. Like I said, you can play around with the profile or you can play around with the segments, but be careful that you don't go overboard with your segments because you don't want to get too much polygons. That's always something you need to keep in mind. Your poly count is really important because you want things to run smooth. If I use Ctrl C to go back to the previous state and I want to make a loop cut, a loop cut is simply what it suggested is. It's a cut between an edge loop. The yellow part is where it's going to be. If I click, you see that we have the freedom to go up and down and slide our loop cut over our mesh. Uh, so we can place it wherever we want to get a nice support edge. I don't want my loop cut here, but I did need it to illustrate the effect. Uh, I want to introduce it here. And you see the closer I get to the other corner, the sharper the corner will be. Um, sometimes you want to do a loop cut or sometimes you want to do a bevel. I find bevel is easier because the computer generates the even spacing between the polygons. You can achieve this by hand, of course. Like I said, um, if we control R and then type in point two and go in the other one and type in point two or maybe minus point two, uh, then we achieve the same thing. But that was a lot of work. And I like the visual feedback as well from the bevel modifier. So I'm gonna stick with the bevel modifier for now. If we go back to our model and go out of isolation mode, we see our model in its full glory. I went into object mode and out of edit mode uh, to show you that our mesh is quite segmented. You can amp up your subdivision modifier, but that introduces uh, more polygon, so the calculation time will be more and we don't want that. At some point you need to say, okay, this is enough polygons and I, I'm gonna fix the rest of the smoothing while using shaded smooth. So I can go back and do this again. Uh, I select the object, shaded flat. This is the default. Uh, if I right click again and set shade smooth, this is the result that we want. Okay. You can see that there's this rubber or cushion kind of thingy at the knee. This is the kind of detail we can add into our model. Now. Uh, we can go back into edit mode. We can we can loop select our edges and we can deselect these edges. Now, what we could have done is grab a box and model the shape from a box, but what we also can do is grab this edge loop and say shift D to duplicate it. Now we have the exact same shape and we can work from that. Here it is. I want to extrude this. 
Um, how we do that is pressing E and there it is. I right click again and now I want to scale it inwards by pressing S and moving my mouse inwards. I can drag it around to a place I like. I can scale it a bit more. Right now I'm getting a bit disoriented, for example, by the X-ray mode. So I'm going, going to go back into Object Tab and I'm going to do in front and uncheck it. Now you can see what's happening. Another thing is I'm out of object mode, I'm out of edit mode, and I am gonna check this. So every time we are in edit mode, you see the final result of the modifier, the subdivision modifier that is. I can enable or disable this effect by clicking this viewport display icon. Um, okay. <clears throat> For now this is perfect. I want to get rid of this polygon and I want to get rid of this polygon because you can see in the concept art there is nothing there. So I'm deleting this face by pressing X. The next thing I want to do is extrude this on the Z axis. But if I press A, I select the whole mesh. And what I want is to select only these four polygons. Now you could say now you could say I can make a loop selection, that's true, you can make a loop selection, but there's an alternative as well. If there are two separate meshes inside of an object, you can hit L when you hover over your mesh and it makes an island selection. <coughs> this is very useful as well. There are multiple ways to select something. You have to develop the feeling for when to use a certain selection method. We now selected the mesh we needed and we can press E for extrude and we want to constrain this to the Z axis. This is a good example when I don't need the subdivision modifier on. I just want to see what my original mesh is looking like. <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is scale over the Z axis to get a bit more of an interesting shape here, to get a bit more of an interesting shape. Okay, this is something I can work with. I want to create a loop cut so I can get a support edge at the bottom here so it's a bit more of a sharper corner there. And that is perfect. Now I see that maybe it's better to grab all of these. And you can grab all of these by uh, clicking and control clicking. And then control clicking here. Uh, and dragging them down. I want to deselect these. I want to deselect these and drag these down as well. See what the effect is here. What does it do? I'm just pulling and pushing around some vertices so I get a result I like. Um, something like this is fine. Now I'm going to introduce a new loop cut and I want to create a loop cut here. So this is a bit more sharp around the corner. I'm going to do the same thing at the, at the back side. Ctrl R to make the loop cut and then sliding it over the edge. Um, now. To finish this off, I'm gonna say pulling and pushing around vertices can be quite tedious and sometimes it's nice to work a bit more organic. And that is the next thing I want to talk about. You can enable proportional editing. This uh, allows you to uh, move around vertices or rotate vertices, polygons or edges uh, and influence the neighbor vertices or whatever. You can see if I drag around this, it influences the whole mesh. And you can see if I scroll down that there is a circle that determines the influence. So, okay. Um, but there's another thing. Now I'm moving around the whole mesh and I don't want to influence the, the hard metal here. So I don't want to influence, I don't want to influence this piece. Luckily for us, there is an alternative version and you can access it by hitting Alt and O. So O for proportional editing and Alt O or the alternate version of proportional editing. Okay, now we have the alternate version of proportional editing on and you can see that I can drag around my vertices a bit easier. Um, so I wanna get this one and I wanna I want to get these and maybe I don't want proportional editing on right now. You have to go back and forth all the time. Okay. 
I want a bit of an overhang so that uh, it looks like so that it looks like the cushion is a bit more pushed out of the hard surface metal thingy. <clears throat> Enable proportional editing again. Going into a different mode, uh, such as normal. You can see that the pivot point is aligned perpendicular to the polygon. Now, now I rotate around the normal x-axis. And if I go into translate, I can translate it a bit more to the place I want it. I don't want this to be as sharp as it is right now. So um, I'm going to show you a different technique. I'm going to disable the viewport and hitting control L. If you have a vertice, a polygon or a edge selected and you hit control L, you automatically select the whole attached island. Now I want to shift H to hide all the other meshes. Enable the subdivision again and now I can see that this edge, that it's so close to the edge of the mesh. Now you can see that the pivot point is oriented in a weird way, even in normal mode or in global, you can see that there is no way we can accurately slide it over. Of course you could delete this edge and make a new loop cut, but I want to show you a different method and that is vertice sliding. So if you hit shift V and you slide over the edge, now you have the same control as you have while making a loop cut. So again, shift V and slide over the edges. I want to go into global and I want to select all of these. Uh, enable proportional editing. And if I uh, shift Z, that constrains my movement to two axes, the X and the Y axis. Okay, now this is something I quite like. If I Alt H to bring back my mesh, we can see our result. This is a good starting point. I want to isolate this mesh once again. I inserted a new loop cut. I clicked this loop and I press X to get into the delete mode or a delete menu. And I said dissolve edges because if you delete the edges, you get this and that's a real funky result and you don't want that. You want to press X and say dissolve edges. Now I have something I like better. Uh, I want to grab these again and translate them down. Do the same thing here, translate those down. Translate these a bit down. I want to grab this edge loop and translate those out. And you can see that it's just all about pushing and pulling around some vertices. So you get the result you like. So you get the result you like. Again, set it to smooth shading. Now, it is not perfect, but we can always come back and tweak it. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to grab this piece and I want to mirror it over to the other side. For that to work, we're gonna have to select this edge loop and you see that the origin is right in the middle. If we press Shift and S and cursor to select it, we place our 3D cursor in the middle of the selection we made. Now what we can do is we can use this 3D cursor as our new pivot point. By pressing the period key on our keyboard and say 3D cursor, or you can do it at the bottom here in this menu, you can say uh, medium point, individual origins, or 3D cursor. We wanted to have it on 3D cursor. Disable proportional editing. We're gonna select this island mesh. We're gonna say Shift D to duplicate. Right click to set it back to its original position. Then go to the bottom mesh and say mirror and global X. Ta-da, there it is. Um, an easier, way to, an easier way to do this is always short keys. So Shift D, duplicate, right click, Control M, Control M for mirror, and then press X. 
and the X is for the axis, you want to mirror it over. So you could use Y and Z uh, also, but it gets a different orientation. Perfect. This is our leg. There are a couple of more things I wanted to show. That is another modifier, a mirror modifier. And, and now we have two leg pieces that are symmetrical. Um, what I usually do is place my modifier on top of the uh, subdivision and I use a mirror object and I use the body. What a mirror object is doing, if I create a new object, I can place my 3D cursor here by, by shift and right clicking and add a new thing, so a new cube, a new cube and I can set the cube that we just made as our mirror object. And now it uses the cube as the mirror. So that's perfect. Um, just a neat trick for you. Um, I'm gonna set it back to the body. Uh, and now we get into the final touches. I wanna add a loop cut here. I wanna scroll up so I get three loop cuts uh, for the price of one. And I'm gonna enable proportional editing and I'm gonna drag this out. Scroll to get a bigger radius. <clears throat> and we're gonna model in a bit of a calf. So something like that. Grab these two, scale them on the x axis as well. Get this one, bring it in a bit more. Grab the shin and bring in the shin a bit. Bring in this part of the shin as well. Cool. Okay. If we go out of isolation mode, give ourselves a better view on the piece we made on the piece we made by setting it in front or in the X-ray mode. We can now use scale. I'm going to use scale here. Scale the bottom piece a bit more down. And this piece can be more on the x-axis as well. This is starting to look like a lower leg. And that's what we want. And maybe we can exaggerate the muscle tone of our character here. Uh, because he got really puny legs. And I want him to look a bit more tougher than, uh, than he does. We started with a box, traditional box modeling. We made a nice little armor piece, a lower leg, and some minor details. This is a great foundation to work off, but for now, this is perfect for learning the basics. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna look at the arm and we're gonna see how we can approach this in a different manner. Uh, so stick around and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.